Imagine this. You wake up in the morning and you take a breath of fresh air. And you smell bacon, eggs, toast, coffee, your favorite breakfast already made for you. And you didn't even have to go to bed. So then you get up and you go into your kitchen and you indulge yourself. But as you're eating, a screen pops up with your day already planned out for you. And you didn't lift a finger. So then, as per your schedule, you get up and you head into your car. And as you open up the car door, you realize something that there's actually not even any seats. In fact, there's not even a steering wheel, just a couch for you to lay down on. So you do. As you lay down, the car takes off, already knowing where your work is without you having to say a thing. So as it's speeding along the road, you're talking to someone. Although you're not just talking to anyone, you're talking to a friend. The same friend that had made your breakfast this morning, planned your schedule, and is driving the car right now. And as you're talking to them, you're talking to them through a computer. Although through isn't really the right word, because your friend is the actual computer. How about instead, picture this it's dark, you can't see anything, and you're hiding from something. Whatever it is, it's outside, and it's attacking people, and you're not sure why. Why? Why? Think, think. You remember now. Scientists, you saw in the news the other day, they created something. Although they didn't just create anything, they created a mind. A mind inside a computer. Scientists were ecstatic. It was working so well. Until it was working too well. It was so fast that it was ahead of us at every step of the way that we made to try and delete it. Soon it copied itself through every single computer on the planet. And it created an army. An army to eradicate the human species. Now, these are two very possible futures when it comes to the idea of artificial intelligence. And when I say artificial intelligence, all I really mean is robots and stuff that we see all the time in Hollywood films. Except these robots would be more than just Hollywood, because it would be a reality. And the technology for it is much closer than you may think. As human beings, we think a lot, right? We do it all the time. In fact, I'm doing it while I speak right now. And when we think of thought, we're not sure really what it is. Because what is thought? Well, you may just think thought is something that our brain creates, right? But that's partly right, but not completely true. The thing that truly makes our thought is many smaller parts of the brain known as neurons. These neurons carry electrical signals throughout the mind. And once these connect, it forms the basis of thought. Humans have over a hundred billion of them. However, recent studies by Michael Crosley, Kevin Stairs, and Kyoji Kemins found that snails only have two neurons in their brains when making decisions. Each of these neurons is responsible for a specific brain process. One checks to see if it, that it found food. And if it found food, then it then checks to see if it's hungry. This process looks a little something like this. Now, when I first saw this study, I was like, who cares, right? I mean, they're snails. We already knew that they didn't think much in the first place. But then something caught my attention for this study. The way that these snails think is actually very similar to a fundamental concept we have in programming, something known as an if condition. Where in programming, an if condition simply checks to see if a statement is found to be true. If it is, then it runs the block of code contained inside. Otherwise, it just skips over and moves along. 
So in the case of the snail, this would actually be really easy to program. If you've found food, then if there is, if you are hungry, then eat. Simple, right? But then again, of course it's simple. Like I said before, it's just a snail. It doesn't think much. But I want to push this a bit further. If we think about human beings and snails, we both have neurons in our brain. In fact, they're exactly the same. So if we can program the neuron inside a snail's mind, then shouldn't we be able to program it in a human's mind? Now, that may seem much more difficult to answer. And really, then you've got to ask, what is it that makes us human beings? Well, one thing that we do all the time is that we break down information around us and understand what it is. Like, if I think of this, I am on a dot, this is a crowd, I can hear little noises from people, and I can feel the clothes against my skin. This type of idea has actually been done many, if not thousands of times within programming. In fact, we have one very good example of this known as Google Deep Dream. This program is able to break down images that it receives into its key components until it finds certain characters or aspects of it that look similar to something else that it has been trained on. And after finding these things, it enhances it. And you get some results like this. This is Starry Night by Van Gogh, or really, Google Deep Dream's rendition on it. If you can see, Google Deep Dream actually found many aspects that look like a dog, and then made it much more apparent, as well as different eyes and people along the bottom. Other examples include this landscape here, and this very creepy background that I'm not too much of a fan of, but hey, it's computer art. It's subjective, right? Okay, so if we can break down information, what about learning from it, right? We learn all the time. In fact, that's why we're in school. Even though I may not like it, you have to grow up, get a job, whatever, right? So we have some examples of this sort of learning, but one of our best examples is known as IBM Watson. This program was able to take thousands of Wikipedia articles and break it down and learn the entire human language from scratch. In fact, it didn't just learn it, it mastered the language because soon it was pitted against the top two players in Jeopardy. And Watson won with both their points combined in a game that we thought revolved around too much of human language, so a computer couldn't understand it. So if we have the ability to break down information and learn from it, then shouldn't I have a robot buddy right now? Someone that I can throw my arm around, because really, that's all that we really are as human beings. We learn. And as I talk to them, I could be speeding along the road as it drives me to work without me touching a thing. But we don't have that. In fact, we're nowhere near. Our best example is IBM Watson. And that's not really much of a friend that you can talk to, unless you're a little bit lonely. So what is it that we're missing? What gives? Well, that's where we got to think, what is it that truly makes us human beings? Now, that may seem very difficult to answer, especially when approaching it from a philosophical view. However, the answer has been in front of us the entire time. We do it every single day. Everything from finding out what we want for dinner to solving the most complex math problems. The thing that makes us unique as human beings is the ability to ask questions. Don't believe me? Well, apes that have been shown sign language can speak a language fluently. They can communicate effectively with not just other apes, but with humans as well, to say things such as, I'm hungry, I want water, or I am sleepy. However, 
in all of our years of study, we have never once observed these apes to ask a question. Never saying why or even pointing to an object for us to explain it. Now, this phenomenon is well documented and has been accredited the fact that apes or any other animal really lack something known as metacognition. The ability to think of the process of thinking. Now, that definitely sounds meta to me, but all that really means is that if I think of myself, I know I'm feeling excited and slightly nervous. And if I were to ask you how you were feeling, some of you might say bored or others might be interested, but most likely you would just say, fine, natural human response, right? And then if I were to ask you what the value of pi is, right? Some of you would know absolutely nothing, and others would know way further into the string of digits than even I know. And that's fine, because as a human being, I understand that I have my own mind, and that within this mind, I have my own feelings and my own sets of knowledge. But I also know that when I look at you, anyone out there, I know that you have your own mind as well, something that thinks and can process information in a different way from me. And that's all metacognition really is. So, why does this matter? Why am I talking about this? Metacognition, all this other nonsense, who cares? Well, actually, if we were to combine the abilities of metacognition and all these other fundamental concepts, then we could create a true artificial intelligence something can, that can think just like us. Such a program would have to be able to break down information and learn from it, much like Watson already does, except do this in a more general sense, finding any patterns it can. And after it finds these patterns, it comes up with a question. Something like, why does this pattern exist? And after forming this question, it demonstrates a form of curiosity where it strives to answer it. And if it can't quite reach an answer on its own or with the information that it has, then it turns to external sources such as human beings and poses that very same question or maybe even subsequent questions so the program can figure it out itself. And that's all we'd need. In fact, a program like that would have no need for any language or anything built into it because it would learn very similar to that of a human child. Because a child has no knowledge of anything when it is born. It doesn't understand any language or numbering system. And that's precisely why you can teach it any language. And the child can still grow up and be as successful as ever. Although, of course, a program may learn much more rapidly than what a human child is capable of, but that's still up for debate. So if we can truly combine all these aspects together, make them work in, say, harmony, then we can get a form of technological singularity where the human aspect of consciousness communicates with the machine-like ability. And after doing this, they fuse together. And at that point, machine becomes more than just a tool. In fact, that time period when this singularity occurs is expected to happen in 2029. And when this happens, a new world will emerge. So whether or not you choose to believe in the utopian world of luxury, relaxation and enjoyment, or the dystopian destruction of the human race, all life, everything you love, anything that you knew, doesn't matter. We're now in a day and age where our next biggest leap in technology would be to create a program capable of consciousness, something that can truly think. And we will get there. There's no doubt about that. In fact, computer scientist Edgar W. Distro once said, the question of whether a computer can think is no more interesting than the question of whether a submarine can swim.
The only way that we can try to stay alive when robots arrive is to stay as cautious as possible, learn as much as we can before it gets here. Because the only question left when it comes to artificial intelligence is when is it going to arrive? Thank you very much.